Welcome to the Edge of Show, your gateway to the Web3 revolution. We explore the cutting edge of blockchain, cryptocurrency, NFTs, ordinals, DeFi, gaming, and entertainment, plus how AI is reshaping our digital future. Join us as we bring you visionaries and disruptors pushing boundaries in this digital renaissance. This show is for the dreamers, disruptors, and doers that are pumped about where innovation meets culture. This is where the future begins. Hi everyone, Josh Krieger here, co-host of The Edge of Show, live at the DC Blockchain Summit 2025 in a place I called home for many years. I'm here today with two of the co-founders of Constellation Network. We have Benjamin Diggles and Benjamin Jorgensen, the, the Ben team. Yep, yeah. what's up Josh, how you doing? Good to have you guys on the show. What brings you to DC? Well, we're here for the uh, Digital Chamber Blockchain Summit. Um, so we presented a, a keynote, we launched a product today. Mr. Diggles over here hosted a panel with Panasonic, former executive director of the World Bank, and uh, Common Crawl. So it's been a it's been a busy day. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, there's a lot to get into, but maybe just to give us some background on Constellation and what you guys do and what folks should know about. Yeah. So Constellation, uh, very simply, we use decentralized networks to create data solutions. So our Ecosystem is made up of Web3 individuals as well as an enterprise and federal arm um, where we're actually working to get blockchain into existing legacy systems while also kind of catering to a Web3 audience. Nice. So obviously there's been a massive shift in the, the landscape of our industry the last few months. What gets you most excited in terms of what you guys can do now that maybe wasn't even possible a year ago? Yeah, I'll, you want to jump in this? Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. Um, you know, we were here last year. We're a big fan of the digital chamber. And, you know, years time ago, it was sort of a somber energy because it felt like there was stagnant movement, right? Right. Uh, a lot of folks in crypto do good on the up, bad on the, or better on, or worse on the down, but real bad when it's stagnant is what I always say. And so it was sort of like, let's just all hang out and lick each other's wounds and get drunk together, which was fine, right? But in the last six months, we've seen an amazing shift. Um, you know, we've been in this now for going on eight years and it's been tough. Right. And I've said this to Congress folks, senators, eight years of looking over your shoulder, wondering if what's regulated, what's legal, what's not uh, is a long time. And so seeing the energy today of where the shift is happening and putting guardrails around this industry is sort of a, a big moment for us. So um, we leaned into this and that's why we chose this uh, this conference to launch our product and be a little bit more involved. Yeah, I, we'll get into the product. Uh, one more question I wanted to ask, though, is what are the, some of the misunderstandings that folks may have around the possibilities of what, what the government can do with blockchain, um, what they are already doing? I think people think, like, uh, in a lot of cases, the government is, is anti-blockchain, but there's use cases happening today with the government blockchain. Maybe you can speak to that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting, right? Because I've often equated the transition to blockchain, much like we've seen the government of the transition to the cloud. They were very against the cloud for a long time, largely because it's distributed and they want to have centralized control, but they had to be educated that they can actually have more control by distributing their data across the cloud. And the same thing's happening with blockchain. It went from, hey, that's expensive. It's hard on the environment. It's not easy to use to we're sort of curious to now we're seeing it, we need it ASAP from the local state all the way to the federal level, which is an awesome place to be. But at the end of the day, all blockchain does for data is it really hardens and optimizes networking capabilities, right? Edge computing and so forth. So for them to not lean into it is missing out and not painting with a brush that can solve so many of their issues today. And we're already starting to see some of that through the Doge initiatives. You know, you have uh, Elon, as Ben mentioned in his his keynote is trying to put the entire treasury on a blockchain, right? A lot of people are like, wow, that's amazing because now we have this transparency. But to us, being fanboys of blockchain are like, it's finally happening. We're finally starting to see that movement take place. And so with the government, it's not just about finance and transparency, but we use it for mission critical, prov provable guarantees on communications, things that can really cause problems from man in the middle attacks, spoofing attacks. And nobody trusts anybody anymore. And that's why we're seeing the government move to zero trust networks. And we've been right at the forefront this entire time. So it's a very exciting yet sort of a nerve wracking moment in, yeah. in society. It's sort of an oxymoron. You talked about zero, tr uh, zero trust networks because the data is right there on chain. But I think in a lot of ways, that transparency is also part of building trust again, right? Rebuilding trust in 
government rebuilding trust in our in our industry. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what we're we're starting to see. To Benjamin's point, talking about Elon Musk saying, "Hey, we need to put the the U.S. Treasury on a blockchain." Where he's not he's not necessarily saying like let's use blockchain digital assets uh, to finance different operations. He's talking more about how do we use a trustless network like Constellation's blockchain to identify where spending is. Making that transparent will kind of illuminate um, inefficiencies and efficiencies, ultimately reducing costs on the government that can be used to fund innovation and propel us forward into the future. It's pretty exciting. Um, we also do an event in Riyadh where the government is looking at blockchain in interesting ways. I think, you know, we constantly are talking about, you know, the cryptocurrency component of our industry, but there's a whole other world out here of just utilizing blockchain to get things done and, uh, you know, robust systems, more transparency, all the things that you guys are for. So that's really exciting. And, and, there, and there's an announcement today uh, yeah. So talk, talk to us about what, 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 what has now been uh, shared with the world yeah. and, and we can talk about. Uh, so we actually filed a patent on this. It's a product called Digital Evidence. And a lot of this is around digital evidence is really around our thesis that we need to stop talking about how to accumulate more data, but instead look at the amount of amassed data that we have today and start verifying, authenticating it, and transforming it into a valuable asset that we can actually use. Uh, and so that, hel that helped us kind of design this product we call Digital Evidence, which basically authenticates uh, critical data streams, uh, most notably working with emergency uh, vehicles, law enforcement vehicles, fire trucks, uh, Panasonic Toughbook. They're actually one of our partners on the deployment of this product uh, and verifying the raw data and using it for critical operations, such as um, having admissible data in the courtroom. How do you comb through all this different data that can be used as evidence to reduce legal expenses and provide more accurate reporting on where fire trucks or law enforcement vehicles or any sort of get critical data stream actually was when it says it was? That, that's pretty amazing. And, you know, uh, I don't know if everyone thinks about Panasonic as, as a partner for something like this. Not everyone realizes the breadth of what Panasonic does uh, yeah. with the government. Uh, maybe you can talk about the genesis of that partnership and why you chose Panasonic. Yeah, yeah. It's actually interesting because we, uh, we have a, a company we acquired about three years ago called Door, a sensor device company that uh, Panasonic Ventures was an early investor in. So they had sort of a weird pseudo exit when we acquired it. Uh, and that was the beginning of the relationship. We met with their Panasonic Toughbook connect team about Shook three years on the way out yeah it was like three years ago and we told them what we were planning on doing with it and it sort of blew their minds when they saw what we expressed with that product um then we dovetail in our federal you know efforts over ten thousand tough books are in circulation right now in the field for the u.s army right and there's a need to like hey we need to know that our gps is exactly what it is we need to know that the data is flowing through this is exactly what it says it is so it was kind of a hand to fit the glove but to your point were they out there looking for a blockchain solution? No, because a lot of the legacy has been sort of left out from this. In fact, our Panasonic constituent, Aiden, who has been here with us today, he's like, I've had a few people come up and point at my badge and say, wow, a Web2 company. And he goes, I don't even know what a Web2 company means. It's like, you represent the legacy. This is sort of an echo chamber focused on digital assets, which is fine. But what we're missing out is this key technology affecting a multi-trillion dollar industry that currently isn't in the game. And Constellation represents a company that is dipping into that industry to bring them into Web3. I got to tell you guys, um, this, this actually hits um, my heart in different ways. Before I got into blockchain, I did government consulting for 12 years in a former life. I worked on open government work, on geospatial work to sort of open up the visualization of data across different shared services. Um, I, I did some work with housing and urban development to try to sort of create more of a dialogue with citizens. And, and if this technology was around back then, maybe I wouldn't have left government consulting. Maybe I wouldn't have this show. Um, but, but in all seriousness, like, this is, these are some of the most exciting use cases of our technology that don't ever get talked about. So um, I, for one, um, and, and becoming a fanboy of what you guys are doing as we're having this conversation, because I think it's really exciting. This is, this is what pioneering blockchain technology and innovation are all about. So uh, kudos to you guys for, for what you've accomplished. Where do we go from here? Like, what is your hope uh, in terms of what you guys can do and what the government can do with blockchain over the next five or 10 years? 
Yeah, I mean, we're at an interesting nexus. Uh, we're at the forefront of helping Congress and Senate uh, create standards and policies and legislation around this thing. And that's where we're seeing a lot of thirst from other uh, blockchain ecosystems wanting to come together to join, which I love because I'm all about partnerships, to establish definitions that we can all agree on and be, feel good about. A lot of people don't know the difference between a meme coin or a stable coin. And, and that's a dangerous game if you don't understand the definitions, right? No problem. It's right, big right? problem. And so I'm just really pleased uh, being a career technologist to be at the forefront of help shape this and to work with some of my favorite people. You know, Ben and I have been friends now 10 years and we have to say one of our favorite things that we get to work together. Uh, and so and confuse your employees. Right. But, about which Ben said what. But it's so important to be attached to folks like you that are willing to take the time to understand us and give us a platform to educate people to show that like, hey, it's not just about meme coins. There's actually real technology that's going to lift all tides here. And we're here to collaborate with as many people as we possibly can. Ben, I don't know if you have anything you want to add. Yeah, I'll jump in there. You know, after the past seven years of, of building Constellation, you know, we've been hit with regulatory hurdles, negative uh, perception of our industry. And what we're seeing right now is really kind of a new starting point. Yes, everybody talks about digital assets because there's a financial component, but as we create a positive spin on this and an evolution with the government, now we can start building out other use cases. We can start to see real adoption take place. Like, I mean, personally, what does that look like to you? I, it, well, I've waited like seven years to get here. Yeah, I think yeah. there's a, another aspect. What it looks like in the future, we're going to stop talking about the academic angles of of feeless structures and how, why this one network has this feeds feature. Nobody cares. They care I mean, about... It's so uh, easy to stand up a network now. It's more about what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, heck, you come to Constellation, you can build your own network on top of our network, right? Mm -hmm. But it's going to be critical that people are, start to understand the applications and how to apply it to really see the adoption. And I think we have that uh, momentum and that wave to ride right now. Very exciting. If folks want to learn more about what you guys are up to, where should they go? Uh, ConstellationNetwork.io. We actually just launched, uh, relaunched our website. You can find information about digital evidence. You can find out about our token called DAG. Um, or check us out on, on Twitter. My handle is uh, at Ben Jorgensen. All right. Yeah. Easy. That's easy. Yes, that is very easy. Thanks, gents, for uh, this Thank you. illuminating conversation. Thank you, sir. Uh, congrats on your big announcement today. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Yeah. We've reached the outer limit at the edge of show for today. Thanks for exploring with us. We have room for more adventurers on our starship, so invite your friends and cool strangers to join our journey. If you're among the hundreds of thousands following us on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, or watching us on Myco or YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, rate us, and make an awesome comment too. And don't forget to pass this episode along to a friend or two who would benefit from it. Doubling back to again, recommend checking out myco.io, where you can watch The Edge of Show and earn for your time and attention. That's myco.io. Don't forget to visit theedgeofshow.com. The is part of the domain name, where you can learn more about collaborating with us and also subscribe to The Edge of Weekly newsletter for the latest Web3 news, events, and show drops. In addition, connect with us on all major social platforms by searching for The Edge of Show. Join the exciting conversations happening online. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great Web3 and AI content. Until then, keep pushing the boundaries. Thanks again for hanging out with us today. The views and opinions expressed on The Edge of Show reflect solely those views and opinions of the show hosts and its guests. Please make sure to do your own research. Our show is not financial advice. You understand that you are using any and all information on or through this podcast at your own risk. Whenever making financial decisions, we recommend doing your own research and talking to your accountant for financial advice. From time to time, we may feature sponsored content on the show for which we receive value, and we may share links for which we receive a commission if you make a purchase through one of these links. Refer to our website, www.edgeofnft.com, for our full disclaimer, terms and conditions, and privacy policy.